Now that we have taken notes and watched the short PowerPoint video regarding the reasons, let's go ahead and do our first official two-column proof example. The first thing that we're given here is that angle AEC is 100 degrees. So what I'd like you to do is get in the habit of marking up your diagrams. In the end, we want to prove that those two angles, AEC and XYZ, are congruent. So let's go ahead and fill in our two-column proof. We know that we put our statements to the left and our reasons to the right. Please keep in mind the statements are specific to the given problem, while the reasons are general theorems, definitions, or postulates. First thing that we know is that angle AEC is 100 degrees. Well, I'm going to ask you, how do you know that? And we know that because it was given to us in the given information. So we write given. The next thing that we know is that angle XYZ is 100 degrees as well. How do we know that? Well, it's given. We want to prove that those two angles are congruent. At this point, we have enough information to say that they are. We're told that angle AEC and XYZ are two angles that have the same measure. So we can say that the two angles are congruent, and our reason would be an if-then statement, which is on our notes from earlier. We can say that if two angles have the same measure, then they are congruent. Please make sure that you are writing complete sentences here, a full if-then statement. You cannot use symbols or shorthand, otherwise you will not get credit. Keep in mind that we used that reason because we're given that each of the angles has a measure of 100 degrees. So we can say that if those two angles have the same measure, then the second thing we can say is that they are congruent. So first we were given the angles with the same measure, so that comes after our if statement. Then we can say that they are congruent. That comes after the then, similarly to what we talked about in the PowerPoint. Let's take a look at the second example. For this one, we're just given the diagram as shown. So the only thing we have to work with is the diagram off to the right. Now, if you are doing proofs out of the textbook, make sure that you are redrawing that diagram. Oops, I forgot to write my statements and reasons, so don't forget to write statements and reasons at the top as well. Keep in mind here it says conclusion instead of proof. But as we talked about earlier, conclusion and proof mean the same thing. You can use those interchangeably. In the end, we want to prove that angle FJH, I'm going to highlight that right here, and angle IJG, I'm going to highlight that right here, are congruent. Well, since we're just given the diagram as shown, and when we look at those angles, we notice that those angles are straight angles. So we can say that angle FJH is a straight angle. But how do we know that? Because it, straight angles can be assumed from the diagram. Since we were only given the diagram to work with, we had to make that assumption. Straight angles are one of the few things that we can assume in this class. But we only mentioned angle FJH. Now let's talk about angle IJG. We know that angle IJG is also a straight angle. How do we know that? Just like before, we assumed it from the diagram, since we are allowed to assume straight angles from diagrams. If you don't want to rewrite assume from diagram, sometimes you may also see your textbook say same as two, since we're using the exact same reason as we did in step two above. Finally, we can say that those two angles, angle F, JH and angle IJG are congruent. And the reason for that would be is if two angles are what kind of angles? Straight angles, since that's what we mentioned in steps two and three above, 
then they are congruent. Please keep in mind what we talked about in the PowerPoint earlier. We mentioned that each of those angles are straight angles and then we were able to say that they are congruent. So the straight angles should come after the if statement that should show up first and then the congruent should come up after the then that should show up second. Since that's what we wanted to prove, that should be last. Example three, a little bit more detailed here. For this example, we're given that angle ABD is 30 degrees. So I'm going to write that on our diagram so we can visualize this a little bit better. Angle DBC is 60 degrees, so let's write that in. And we're told that angle E off to the right there is a right angle, so I'm going to put the box there. In the end, we want to prove that angle ABC is congruent to angle E. So let's think about what we're given and how we'll get there. First thing that we're told is that angle ABD has a measure of 30 degrees. How do we know that? It's given, so we write given. Don't forget to write in your statements and reasons above. Keep in mind your statements are specific to your diagram while your reasons are general. Next we have angle DBC, which is 60 degrees. We know that that angle has a measure of 60 degrees because it's given to us, so we write given. The next logical thing to do here would be to say, okay, since we know angle ABD is 30 degrees and angle DBC is 60 degrees, those two angles together make up the entire angle ABC, that yellow angle right there. So we can say that angle ABC must have a measure of 90 degrees. The reason for that is addition. We added the 30 degrees plus the 60 degrees and that gives us the 90 degree angle. Since we are given that angle E is a right angle and we want to prove angle ABC and angle E congruent, we want to mention that angle ABC is now also a right angle. And the reason we know that is if an angle measures 90 degrees, which we mentioned in step three above. So we said angle ABC is a measure of 90 degrees. We got that from addition. And now we know if an angle measures 90 degrees, then it is a right angle. For step five, we have to write in our last given, which says that angle E is a right angle. How do we know that? because it is given. And finally, since we know that angle ABC is a right angle and angle E is a right angle, we've listed the fact that they are both right angles in our proof. We can say that angle ABC is congruent to angle E. Why? Let's use our if-then statement that says, if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. In order to use that reason, you have to state that each angle is a right angle in your statements column, which we did. We said ABC is a right angle, we said angle E is a right angle, so we can say that they are both right angles, therefore they are congruent. Now, we could have also gone a different route with this proof. Instead of saying that angle ABC is a right angle, we could have kept that angle ABC has a measure of 90 degrees. And we could have then said that since angle E is a right angle, angle E has a measure of 90 degrees because if an angle is a right angle, then it has a measure of 90 degrees. If we chose to list angle ABC and angle E, Having a measure of 90 degrees, our final reason would be different, and it would say if two angles have the same measure, then they are congruent. 
that would be different than saying that they are right angles. So you could have gone that route as well as long as you mentioned same measure.